my mother, on my birthday, called my grandmother to talk to her about this book. My grandmother is a 98-year-old white lady. And my mother was worried about how my grandmother would feel about the word racism in the title. And my grandmother said to my mother, oh, Linda, racism doesn't only mean the things it meant when you were a girl. And my mother said, and I have to say, my grandmother's kids are pretty good sports about the fact that my grandmother is clearly not done bringing them up. Um, so my mother said, well, that's right. It means all of those little things and the blind spots that you have um, and things like wondering, this would be an ableism example, but wondering if the word blind spot is ableist, right? Like all of those little places where you don't notice things or also all of those assumptions and the default to an assumption that assumes whiteness. And so they had this conversation about it. But what my grandmother said, and I, in, in her comment, it's not just what it was, it's not just the things it was when you were a girl. She said, you know, like, cross-burning and white supremacy. So for my grandmother, white supremacy is cross-burning, right? Um, and I think for me, white supremacy are those assumptions that people make. And these are really heavy words, racism, white supremacy. But it's sort of saying, like, what does it mean to live in a world that is designed for a particular kind of person? And what does it mean when you're not that kind of person? Right, and I think that that is a useful way of thinking about white supremacy. And I think racism, again, it's the sort of what happens when you're expecting other people to default to your norm, and what are the ways in which there is retribution when they don't. And I think that's kind of how I understand them. For me, racism is about power. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is, you know, the, I wouldn't say that every single essay in the book is about the racism of people who love you. I did that thing where you have a collection of essays and the title of one of the essays becomes the title of the book. Um, but I really deliberately didn't talk about my interactions with my Indian family, which are, to be clear, more awful than my interactions with my white family. They're often a little bit less hurtful because the white family, I'm always surprised. Um, and so like in the surprise, there's pain. But the, the Indian family is, was sort of much more overt in what it was up to. And so you would think I would be more likely to call that racism, but I don't because they don't hold the kind of power, right? They don't have the societal backing. Now, if I were in India, right? Like if my mom and her siblings had been the people to be the immigrants, that I can imagine that that dynamic might be reversed. But here in the United States, I deliberately didn't use the word racism when talking about the interactions with the Indian family because it's not backed up by that power of white supremacy.